Hi, I'm Jane Fonda, and I want to give you a brief introduction to this documentary in order to put it in its historical context. Histories of the Vietnam War all mention the widespread anti-war movement that was centered on campuses. What most histories don't tell you is that an equally widespread and powerful movement against the war existed inside the military itself. It started in the mid-60s, mainly as random individual acts. But after the Tet Offensive in 1968, things began to change. GIs started to organize. They put out underground newspapers and spread them secretly on bases. They joined anti-war demonstrations and formed their own organizations. And it wasn't easy. The Uniform Code of Military Justice gave commanding officers absolute power over their troops, and they came down hard on dissent in its ranks. GIs faced threats, harassment, even prison for their defiance. There was rampant racism in the military. Black soldiers inspired by the civil rights and black liberation movements engaged in many acts of resistance all through the war years. One example was the 43 black GIs from Fort Hood who were imprisoned for refusing to be deployed for riot duty at the National Democratic Convention in Chicago. It was anti-war GIs who first challenged me to oppose the war. And as I became involved in the GI movement, I started to understand its class significance. You see, while the civilian anti-war movement at that time was primarily white and middle class, the GI movement was made up of working class kids, sons and daughters of farmers and hard hats. There were about 10,000 women in the service at that time. These were kids who couldn't afford college deferments, and they were largely rural and urban poor, especially blacks and Latinos. Their opposition to the war struck at the heart of America. Anti-war GIs weren't the majority, but their influence was huge. By 1971, there were over 300 underground GI newspapers, and soldiers in every branch of the military were participating in demonstrations against the war. 1,500 marched outside the gates of Fort Hood on Armed Forces Day, which the GIs had renamed Armed Farces Day. In Vietnam, soldiers were refusing orders to fight, and the Army reported an almost 400% increase in AWOLs in five years. AWOL stands for absent without leave. That year, retired Marine Corps Colonel Robert Heinel Jr. wrote in the Armed Forces Journal, quote, by every conceivable indicator, our army that now remains in Vietnam is in a state approaching collapse with individual units avoiding or having refused combat murdering their officers and non-commissioned officers, drug-ridden and dispirited, were not near mutinous, unquote. Starting in 1968, a network of GI coffee houses sprang up just outside military bases all around the country to support the GI movement. They were decorated with rock and roll posters run by civilian anti-war activists and were places where servicemen and women could meet to plan demonstrations, publish underground GI newspapers, learn about Vietnam. I had spent a lot of 1970 touring these coffee houses and military bases and meeting with soldiers, so I had a sense of what was happening. And then Army Dr. Howard Levy came to meet with me. Howard was a hero in the anti-war movement for having refused orders to train Green Beret medics en route to Vietnam, for which he was court-martialed. Howard suggested that I create an anti-war tour of entertainers to travel to military bases in this country and the Pacific, a sort of counter show to the very pro-war sexist shows that Bob Hope toured every year in Vietnam. I had just finished filming Clute with Donald Sutherland, and Donald and I decided that Howard's idea was a good one. Using material we found in GI newspapers and with sketches written by the likes of Jules Pfeiffer and Herb Gardner and others, we performed at GI Coffee Houses stateside, and in the winter of 1971, we went overseas. 
We performed the show for an estimated 64,000 active duty soldiers, sailors, Marines, men and women of the Air Force. They risked a lot coming to the show, knowing that everyone was photographed and the military brass did all they could to make them stay away. The film of that tour, the one you're going to see, opened July 14, 1972, was in theaters barely a week when it was pulled from circulation by the distributor and most copies were destroyed. I hope you enjoy this film, restored by Indie Collect with the support of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Thank you. <laughs>